Welcome to Jump Shots from the Goal Line. I'm your host, Jonathan Dugan. I am joined, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Mr. John Henningsen. And we have a returning guest today. We have the incredible golf mind of James Rogers. Um, you guys might remember him from some of our live content. Um, he was one of our um, feats on the ground um, out there with me and Henny. And then obviously he's joined us just for some some golf talk in the past as well, kind of covering the Masters. He did an incredible job with that, got us all geared up and ready to go for that. He was incredibly wrong on every take he had, including Bubba Watson, but we'll let it pass because this is a podcast where you come to get wrong information. We've covered that um, extensively on last week's episode. So, gentlemen, um, a lot of interesting stuff happened this week in both of your worlds. Um, I'm I'm kind of scared to call it my world just yet. Um, I'm I've definitely got my toe in the water. But before we jump into that, how was uh, how's your weekends, boys? Life was good over here, per usual, uh, as everybody probably knows, as we'll continue to bleed into not being a podcast. And in no way is this a golf podcast, but absolutely, I just golf. You know what I mean? That's what I do. <laughs> when I get the free time, like, I'm golfing. Uh, did Definitely dip into watching a little golf today. Um, but generally, the weekend was pretty light. Saw a little bit of family. I got a golf with family. But again, That's fun. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been good, man. Life's good. No complaints, all positive vibes over here. Happy to be talking with you fellas on a Sunday. Yeah, what family do you have in town? Uh, I had a cousin drop through. Little cousin, uh, he's he's really one of the people I that really got me into the game initially. Uh, like one of those people that I played with. Like he took it on. He was an older cousin. We were close close enough in age, kind of more like a brother relationship, honestly. Yeah. Um, and so I was always kind of chasing whatever he was doing. So like not not in every aspect and in every single sport. Like I never was a hockey guy. He played hockey. Mm -hmm. um, but but in a lot of ways, I looked up to what he was doing. I love beating him. I think he still loves beating me. He played a lot more golf. He's definitely far superior to me in that world. Um, but just, you know, like a brother to me and so very good to see him. Is he out here shooting 81s and 82s like our, my wonderful co-host here? Oh no, he's like honestly, he's far better than that. Um, wow. No, he's he's ba he's basically you know he, if he's playing, he's scratch, and then if he's not playing, then yeah, then he might, you know, like he floated around eighty today. But um, but generally speaking, if he's playing a lot, that's that's when it's frustrating. If he doesn't play a lot, I can hang with him. Yeah. If, if he gets he, into uh, a rhythm, if, though. Yeah. If he if he starts playing and he starts. You know, it's it's like when it's the difference between someone who actually practiced for like years, like he was a like he was a pro. He ran a golf course. He he did all these things and he immersed himself in the game. And he's probably, you know, it's the ten, the rule of ten thousand hours, right? He's he's out Malcolm Gladwell me by Ooh. tenfold. So um, it'll take some time for me to catch up. I'll probably have to just ten thousand more swings. Yeah, that's all it takes. And uh, speaking of guys that. I definitely put in the practice on on the chipping greens and the the putting and everything else. James, how was your weekend? I actually have a really cool story. I got a chance to go out and play Corey this weekend and got paired up with a young man and his brother, and they're all from New Mexico. Uh, they're in town visiting uh, their other brother who's in the Air Force here. Nice. And it was the wildest thing ever, guys. They had four carts full of people watching this kid. What? So they pull up to the first tee, bro, and I'm like, what the heck is going on here, dude? And I'm playing with my neighbor who's not – she's a beginner, to mm -hmm. say the least, and does not like pressure, right? And here it comes. So the first hole is that easy par five. We're playing from the black tees, not the golds. But still, you know, this kid smokes a drive right down the middle, um, hits it right on the green in two. Um, I also – uh, was on putting for Eagle in two, but I'll tell you guys from the very first hole to the 18th hole, it was a grudge match. Uh, his little gallery started getting behind me because I had a, a sloppy front nine, uh, shot 40. Uh, he shot 37, and then I shot three under on the back, and he shot four over on the back. So I beat him by seven and then three total um, wow. overall. But, anyways, guys, it was so cool. Um, it's so rare that you get paired up as a single with uh you know or whatever i was with my neighbor but you get paired up with people that are actually like worth playing with mm -hmm. but uh the whole atmosphere in the gallery and stuff it was really a trip and uh you know everyone is a good spirits it's not like we we're you know out there you know cutting each other's throats or whatever but yeah it was so much fun guys really really cool and then obviously same thing man get to hang out with the fam and 
Yeah. Uh, gotta, gotta go to Costco to get today and get a hot dog and some pizza. So pretty awesome. Yeah, I think the the coolest thing you said was the hot dog and the pizza in my world. Common, so. man, common man W right there. What a win from James Rogers. Yeah. Right when you thought he was down, he picks himself off the mat. Oh my God, it's uh, it's really a bummer, guys. I've, I've played there three Saturdays in a row, three 72s in a row, all different ways. And um, I really don't know what I'm going to do next, but uh, we'll see what the encore is. Nice, man. Well, I know I know Henny absolutely loves Corey Pines. So, you know, that's definitely his whole world. That's his home course. So, right, right, Henny? So stupid. So stupid. <laughs> he hates that course, dude. Oh, man, that, that kid did not like the back nine. I'm not going to lie, Henny. He was like, what the heck is this, man? Um, yeah, what, what are we doing here? So it's in a quarry. It's on a landfill. And you're saying this is the best you have to offer. You guys are all content with this. You're sure this is the best course. It's a, my qualm is not that. Look, it's just going to no one gives a shit about this. But my qualm is not that it's like a whatever little course. It's just that when I, people get really excited, and they're like, oh, I love quarry. I'm like, this is on I a can't. landfill. That. This I is on a land that. It's a look. It's a course, and it's fun, and it's scorable, and it can be. If if you don't get wind, you can light that course up, which is fun. And if you do get wind, it can be very punishing. But mm. uh, sounds like it's, on, it, it's, it's on a landfill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very narrow course, from what I've heard. So yeah, well, um, five, five minutes from the house, so we'll take it. Yeah, yeah, for gonna, sure. What are we going to chat about, Henny? I think you're going to open up a can of worms on this live stuff. I want to hear what you have to say. Damn, y'all don't even care about my weekend, son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, I do. I mean, clearly, I mean, James, like, uh, he's fast forward right into a Yeah. Other yeah, hey, John, man, what did you do this weekend, man? My man gets a hot dog and a slice of pizza and says, screw the host. Okay. No, <laughs> hey, it's cool. I honestly, I didn't do anything to really bring up anyway. I just, uh, I watched the Champions League final with my buddy, uh, Shondor. Watch Man City win um, the European. Uh, championship for the first time, which was painful for anybody that watches footy out there. I know Hesse, if he would have joined tonight, he would be right there with me. Um, but anytime I get to watch some good footy, I'm I, I'm here for it. But I did not golf this weekend because I am only allowed to golf what it seems like once every three months, right, Henny? I think that's my allowance. So yeah, quarterly. Um, yeah, quarterly for sure. Hopefully, I get out there sooner than later. I'm trying to get in as much rounds as possible before this baby's here and uh, i'm gonna be grounded for at least a year so um hopefully i can get my way out there other than that just some quality time with the daughter um trying to you know really stick close to her because anytime you're bringing a new life in you know you don't want to exclude the the past lives and then uh my stepson played in a basketball tournament out here in Vail. um they won like every single game by like 30 points and then dropped the final at the buzzer so it was tough scenes at the end, but it was fun. Uh, just a lot of family time, kind of like James. So, you know, you guys skipping past me was perfectly, perfectly okay. It makes total <laughs> who sense. They, who they lose to? Who's who's hot on the block in the eighth grade game? Who who they, who, to, who got him? <laughs> well, he's a freshman now, actually, at Sienega. So, um, right. But he's going in like it's summer yeah, league. You got yeah. like, most of the kids there, but everybody's going to be on the teams there. But like, so who who they end up losing to, though? Yeah, real quick though, it was actually kind of cool to see what the the basketball scene here in Tucson is because I just hear about it all the time. Obviously, like you know, from people like you, other local. Well, you're not really local, but you're kind of local. Um, but local. yeah, yeah, at this point, right? I think we're both <laughs> yeah. kind of locals now. Uh, but um, they beat Sal Point by like thirty. They beat um, Saguaro by like thirty, which those two are like obviously pretty damn good. They beat Tucson High yesterday by like 20 or 30, but then they played them today and they they got beat at the buzzer, which um, Tucson High, from what I gather, is, is pretty damn good at basketball as well. They had some kid on their team that was just, I mean, I'm trying to think who even would be the NBA equivalent. I don't know, Henny, if I describe a player that literally drives every single time and flails, who do you immediately think of? <laughs> I don't know, every European yeah, so Luca. No, exactly. I, yeah. This dude was like the two song Luca. Every time he'd drive in, he'd flail and the refs were just giving him every call. So it was tough scenes, but the boys played hard. They they played tough. They gave it their all. And that's all you can ask for at this level. So it was cool, man. Um, but like James said, let's jump right into it, boys, because some news hit this week that I think we've all I think we anticipated this happening, but like years down the road, right? Um, I, I anticipated this whole live golf PGA kind of 
um, face off this battle to go on for years to come. I ultimately thought Liv would not win because of just kind of the format that they run and then the PGA just being kind of the old dog on the block. But I don't know, boys, who who do you think comes out on top from this whole scenario? I mean, what's next? You know, that's the scary thing about this. You know, if you can get into something like you said that has so much heritage and so much tradition and and take over an association, you know, is is a football team next? Is something maybe oh, a little more an international real big scale picture, next? Then. Okay. Um, you know, I, I I really don't know, but Greg Norman and Phil Mickelson both are sitting back and saying, I told you so to a lot of people, um, just yep. like you alluded to, um, didn't think it was going to go this quick. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, the thing that's the weirdest about it is that it was done in secrecy uh, late at night. News was yep. broken through Twitter. Uh, most people um, that are big name that are involved on both sides of the fence were informed through Twitter. Uh, I just, yep. I don't know. I mean, Henny, what, what's your take on this sudden change? Well, my immediate thing is that I don't really find like a winner in this. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody loses. Like mm-hmm. I, I like my, I keep like, I keep coming back to, and we can talk about like the different, like, if, is there a winner or loser with like, maybe these, if you want to take it player by player, person by person, but just like as a whole, I just think it kind of sucks for golf. Like as much as we've been talking <laughs> about what a win that this was like, Oh, it's cool. Like it's competitive and it's forcing yeah. them to raise their pools and it's bringing more interest to the game. So like, Hey, maybe overall, this is a good thing. Well, if it only ends up being, you know, coming back to this one thing, but all we've done is then further monetize and push forward, like, I don't know, man. It just, it just, I think it's, it sucks. Like, because it, it leaves you with this like whole, like, oh, this guy's a hypocrite and he's this and he's mm-hmm. like, I just think it ends up leaving a bad taste. And like, in my mouth, I just have a bad taste about the yeah. whole thing. I don't like any of it. Like, I mean, as much fun as we've had with all of it, like the end result, and and we're still probably far from what the actual end result is. There's still a lot to play out here. And like, all we have is sort of a, Hey, let's agree to not fight in court forever. And maybe we can work something out is the best I can understand. I think there's still a long game ahead of this as to like, even determining who a winner is. So I think the victory laps from the live tour are early, frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that it's like, a monumental win, but just in the simple sense of if you were sympathetic to, I think we're all sympathetic to nine families, but if you were sympathetic to that that conversation around it, if you were sympathetic to the history of the tour and what that means, um, if you were sympathetic to just guys taking money and like, you know, going for it and all of this, but then what about the guys that got, I just, no matter like, as I keep taking 360 view, 360 view, 360 view, I just always end up being like, uh, gross. Yeah. See, I disagree with you, dude. Like, I think there's a very clear cut winner with all of this and it's definitely the live guys. Like, I think the guy that comes out with the most pie on his face is definitely Jay Monahan. Like he's just a rat fuck like that lied to his entire contingent and convinced them to not take a deal and play the nine 11 card and made them feel terrible about even like entertaining it. And then he does the complete opposite of what he told them to do and goes out and takes a deal and kind of like what James said, like did it in the the middle of the night at a four seasons and um, secured his own position within golf, at least for now. And then if you look at like the live guys, like, I mean, they have a reason to celebrate dude. Like they got their bag. They, they completely are setting themselves up for the future. They all got these huge signing bonuses. They got to play less golf. So their bodies are in better shape. Um, And now like, Dude, I mean, the the Saudis run everything. They own golf at this point. Um, I think you're right, Henny. There's a lot that needs to be ironed out because, like, you're hearing a kind of a lot of different things coming out of it, right? Where they're saying, well, Liv's not going anywhere. Like, Liv is still going to be there. Well, if that's the case, like, I don't understand the point of all of this. Like, why is Liv still there? Um, but at the same time, too, right, if these guys want to come back, they're also saying they're going to have to pay back their signing bonuses and this and that. Like, I don't understand why they would have to do that 
if the Saudis own everything, like they're the ones that gave them those bags, they're the ones that convinced they them to come over. They don't own everything. Like they have a, like they yeah, don't own they don't everything. own the the Japanese league. You're right. <laughs> I get what you're saying. But I mean, like, explain to me why you think they own everything. You think they own the entire PGA Tour now, and like this is all completely owned now by so the Saudis. Hey, I'm like, that's no, not I do. Agreement. Let me let me tell you. Let me tell you why PGA Tour. And they, they bought, bought the DP World Tour as well, so they own the European Tour now too. And I get, um, I get where you're coming from, Henny. Like, okay, well, how much do they own? Like, how much stake do they have? It doesn't matter, dude. Like, where's the yeah. money? Right at the end of the day, money talks, bullshit walks. Like, they are the funding for golf now. Like, outside of the Japanese Tour, they are the funding for the entire freaking professional golf scene. Outside of like what the Ryder Cup or like the masters, like the standalone tournaments. Yeah. They're not, they don't own that shit. Cause nobody ever will, but like for what it is, dude, like they own golf, like they, yeah. And again, they don't have like, I, it's still to be seen what their controlling stake is. But like I keep saying, like they are the biggest funnel of money into golf now. So I get where you're coming from, but dude, at the end of the day, like I guarantee that the Saudis are, are negotiating the fact that like they are the live guys are not going to get penalized. They can rejoin the tour. No problem. It's going to piss so many people off. It's going to piss off the PGA guys. It's going to piss off the, the guys that were in all my mentions. Every time I posted anything live on Twitter or on, on TikTok. but it doesn't matter, dude. Like at the end of the day, like the guys that are coming out of this without pie on their face. So the guys that took the money and went to the live, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. Like, cause there are a lot of guys like, Harold Varner the third that like went over there, secured the bag, and we all understood why he did it. And then there's other guys like Phil who had all the money in the world and did it strictly just because he wanted to change the league and he's still kind of an asshole for it. But dude, he comes out looking sweeter than anything, right? Like he did change golf. He did exactly what he set up to do. He's a huge winner. Yeah, but like why like but why is he a winner? Like, what did he change? Like, how did he make golf better for anybody that we know of? Because he's getting them more money. Like at the end of the day. Okay, but it, that's what I'm saying. So like that's so then you're just completely defining winning different than how I'm defining it. Okay. If it's whoever has the biggest bag, fine. That's a yeah. completely different conversation about like what's a winner in my world. Okay. Plain and simple. Well, what's a winner in your world then? Like, because I know you said nobody came out on top, but if somebody came out on top, what was your definition of winning? So like, so honestly, so then I would honestly flip this and this is like where it's crazy. Like, and I feel like I'm in crazy town too. So like, just to be clear, <laughs> I think are, this is dude. a fucking yeah. weird conversation. And like, I'm not even sure that I, as prepared as I can be for it, but like, I'm not fully, cause like Nobody I'm now looking at Rory where I was never really on Rory's side where, cause I thought he was just kind of being a shill in some degree. But then now I look back at it and I'm like, well, at least this guy actually like believed and actually thought in something and then went out there and like stood for it and then like actually did it. And like it wasn't that he just stood for money and he like actually maybe believed in something. And like, sure, there might have been like some incentive for him, you know, for, as far as money goes and in terms of his longevity and all of these things. But I look back at it and I'm like, well, at least this guy had like a backbone, dude. Like at least he actually sort of believed in something and he might have ended up looking like a sucker because of it. Right. Like yeah. to your point, like did he end up with pie on his face? But I'm like, Hey, maybe this guy's actually just like actually is a good dude. And he actually did care and did actually believe in some of these things, like in an altruistic manner. And then I still think Phil's a blood sucking vampire and I'll never <laughs> like Phil, but like that yeah, is yeah. what it is. But I just, I don't know. Like I just, I don't, that's why I think everybody's a loser. Like if, if the whole thing, I mean, Jay Monahan's like the worst. There's oh, like he's no such doubt, a rat fuck. like yeah. hands down, like not, I, I, I could just, I'm, I just do not want to listen to that guy. No, everybody else, does. like, you know, relatively speaking might feel like a pawn in this field, feel like he's a pretty good power player, but like, you know, the rest is kind of blurred lines. Yeah. And dude, I get this. So I'm the biggest Rory hater that y you probably know. Right. And like, I, I tend to agree with you. At least he stood up for something. At least he like stuck to his guns, whatever, like was the whipping boy for the PGA. I believed that. And I still to a, a, a sense do, but when he came out recently and said, well, I think then the PGA guy should be get like reparations or like get, get like a, a payment since we stuck to our guns, then that flies in the face of everything that he stood up for. Like, and so that's why I'm confused on Rory is like, okay, Roy, like, I'm, I'm with you. I finally like 
I'm siding with you on something because I completely agree with you, Henny. Like, I think it's admirable what he did. But the moment he went out there and was like, well, then we should get paid. Like, no, dude, you shouldn't. Like, you, what you get out of this is what, what you believe, Henny, is that he is a good guy and that he stood up for what he believed in. That's what you get, bro. Like, that's what you get for sticking up for a shitty person like Jay Monahan. And granted, that's not his fault. But what I disagree with is like him and then there were like, a couple other PGA guys were like, oh, well, we should get a bag now. Like, no, you fucking shouldn't. You had your chance. You decided to go with what you felt in your gut was right. And that's, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that's what you get from this is like you come out looking like roses on top. Don't ask for a bag. That's that's the only beef I have with Rory. And I might be nitpicking because I do have kind of like a bone to pick with the guy. But because I think he's just corny, but like. Yeah, he's still corny. I think the yeah. only thing I would say about that, though, is if he's like actually backing other people and trying to defend other people, if he's asking for his own money, I'm kind of with you. Like, hey, yeah. whatever. That's a shit move. If yeah. he's coming from a place, though, where he had conversations, if I come to you and James and I'm telling you, like, guys, stick it out. Look, we're going to make this work. Da 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 da. I'm like putting my ass on the line, quote unquote, but I know I'm really risking your money your family's yeah. money your money james and like i'm having that conversation with you then i better believe my ass is going to be back out in front of that microphone going like hey someone better make this right because like i'm an asshole but i'm not that kind of asshole but see okay really quick before i let james chime in because i do want james to like give yeah, his opinion because he's like talking. yeah i know we're getting on our soapbox <laughs> but really quick why the fuck is roy the guy like again i'm coming back onto that like why was he always the guy that was like the fucking poster boy for the pga like Again, shit his pants this weekend at RBC. Like, again, I'm going to keep saying that. The dude is just a perennial, like, pant shitter. Like, I don't even know if that's a word, but I like it. And, no, like, he, he was the face of the PGA. And if he is going and, like, telling guys, like, just stick it out, just stick it out. Like, why is he the guy doing that? Like, why is it not Tiger? Like, we still haven't heard from Tiger on this whole thing. Like, that's my only issue with, with Rory is, like, why is why does he think he has to be that guy? All right. Now, James. Like you're the the third party. React here. to us. Respond yeah, react, to everything react we said. React to our bullshit because <laughs> Henny and I are I just, obviously on separate wavelengths. Where do you fall in the middle? It's just so hypocritical, long long term, right? It wasn't a good way to source money eighteen months ago, but now because things have changed, you should get paid. Like, come on, man, you you stood the moral high ground, and like Dugan said, you know, now you want your bag. I, I just. I don't quite understand it. I mean, I understand the frustration. You know, a few uh, months sure. ago, Rory pulled out of a premier event and was fined $3 million um, just because he wasn't ready to go that week, right? Um, it, it just, I don't know, there's so much hypocrisy. But what I'm thinking as far as switching gears just a little bit, but stick, sticking with the same topic, how much of a catalyst was it having Brooksy finish second Mm. You know, Patrick Reed, uh, top 10 in the Masters, and then turning Failed around two. two weeks later and winning the PGA, um, having Bryson in the top five. I mean, you got to think someone somewhere, either Jay Moynihan's ear, someone's ear got kind of uh, warm there sitting here thinking about like, guys, we're missing out on a shitload of money. Yeah. And the fact that these guys we thought were out like, you know, messing around. They're winning and competing at the highest level. I mean, what do you think, guys? I mean, there had to have been something more to this where they were finally like, guys, we can't do this anymore. I don't think it was like the biggest sticking point. I think it definitely made a difference because these guys are playing 54 holes. They're playing less tournaments. They're fresher, um, less pressure because they're, they're making a freaking bag every time they play for the live. Um, I think that probably did play a part in it. I think the biggest catalyst with this is what's coming out now, right? Like long term, the PGA could not fight the legal battle. Yeah. Like they were running out of money already. They're reaching into reserves to pay their freaking lawyers to fight the the private investment fund on this. And then also shit coming out that like the private investment fund had proof that they were in collusion with like long term sponsors of the PGA. You know, people like ESPN, people like NBC, people like all these different sponsors. And that was going to come out in the the investigations and like in in this whole legal battle. And they just decided, well, well, shit, like, you know, we we don't have the collateral to fight this long term. I think that was the biggest sticking point. But I'm sure Brooks going out there and having 
a huge run. The other live guy is playing really well. Like I'm sure that played a small part in it. Absolutely. Henny, what are your thoughts on that? I think, I think it's nice. I think, I think it makes it, I think it made it for, I think it helped the storyline for like the live to be like, Oh yeah, we're relevant. But like the, the ratings were the ratings, right? Like they sure. weren't, they weren't, <laughs> they don't even want to talk people about weren't it. like <laughs> people weren't watching it. People weren't talking about it. Like we talked yeah. about cause we went to an event and all this stuff. And like, but I think, no, I mean, I think those players were still going to have a brand and those guys were, but the live hasn't really like, that's the thing. The live hasn't proved anything and proof of concept. So, I mean, my take, that's why I'm saying like, th- this is why I feel like I, I don't really feel like a loser, but I feel like golf's a loser because it feels like just the biggest sellout group of all groups. I mean, it's oh, literally easily. like, it was like, man, there's money here. And then they were gone and the whole thing collapsed like nothing. I mean, and we'll see again, like what the fallout looks like. There's some people that saying there still could be battles to be had and, you know, can you squeeze out live and maybe they just own a, a piece and, and whatever. But like, if it's just pocket steep that are pocket steep that are pocket steep, then we know what this league is. And I think there's going to be people that have real pushback about it. Cause if they didn't want to watch live, like, I mean, that's the one thing that I don't really get. Like, I mean, that's a weird thing. And I'm not going to flip on this, right, dude? Like, I want to watch golf. I'm going to watch it, dude. I want to watch yeah. golf, and I'm going to watch golf. And that's why I said I was, like, never mad at people for going to the live, and I wasn't going to, like, get on my high horse about everything, like, live and be like, oh, my God, everything they're doing is so gross. The gross part is, like, saying one thing and doing another, Jay Monahan. And, like, the part that just ends up being sad is that if, like, it ends up all just being money and, like, no one really has anything to stand on besides just who's got the deepest pockets, well, then golf is a hoe. I mean, more or less, and like I'm saying that in the nicest way I could think of, which probably isn't really nice, and I take it back slightly. But like, what I mean, what all we, what like, what is golf, right? Like, that's yeah. pretty much what just happened. Yeah, no, dude, you're completely right. Like, golf is low key just hone itself out there for sure. Another thing I think also played a little bit of um, a part in this is the rumor has it was that a recent, what was it, like a recent top ten world ranking golfer was in talks with the live. A lot of people think it was John Rahm um, because the rumor was that the guy finished top three in the, um, in the masters. Well, if you do the math, right? Like, <coughs> excuse me, Phil's Phil finished two. He's already in the live. Brooks is already in the live. You know, who else was in the top three? Like pro- it had to be Rom, And that was probably scary for the PGA too. Like, obviously they're going to be hemorrhaging money there. Um, but, I think there's a lot of factors that played a role in this, but I think it does come down to the fact like there's a lot of people that come out of this just looking really shitty. You know, the Saudis already looked bad for their own, like their own history and everything else. Jay Monahan, I don't know how he has a job. Uh, Rory looks like an idiot. Phil looks like a bloodsucker. A lot of the live people still have that stigma behind them that they just went for the money and they absolutely did. But at the end of the day, like, if we're going to paint somebody a winner, it has to be the live guys, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, James, you still haven't really commented. Like, who do you take as your winner? Well, I mean, it's got to be Phil. It's got to be um, Greg Norman. It's got to be all the guys that left because Norman's going to be look, out. Look what Tiger Are we sure out. about that? Tiger turned that's out all, 800, that's all 800 the million. Is. Now, you got to understand, too, I'm looking at this holistically, but from my own perspective, I'm a purist, man. You know, I think a lot of these guys, Rory and, and John Rahm, were playing for the record books. And, you know, frankly speaking, the other guys were playing for generations of their families. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, on full swing, Dustin talked about that pretty candidly. Um, you know, I think that uh, if Brooks said it himself the other day, if he hadn't gotten so uh, badly injured with his knee or whatever it was, you know, he he might have definitely not been in the same place to make that kind of decision. Right. Cause he didn't know yeah. what his career looked like long-term. So I don't know, man. I mean, the, the devil's in the details, but the, the money is just so intriguing to some people. I, I don't understand it guys. I, I, like I said, I'm a purist. I really enjoy um, the history of the game and um, playing for trophies. Obviously the mm-hmm. money's big nowadays, um, no matter yeah. what league you're in, but I mean, it's it just, I, I really can't get behind something like this. It's going to shake up the entire fabric of the, uh, of the history of the game, you know? Um, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's no. just laughable at sometimes when I, when I take a step back and I'm thinking about all these people that are fighting about touring around uh, the world and, and playing a, a game for a living, but there really is some ethical stuff that's going on now. And it's just so murky, you know, you guys yeah. have said it a million times, but it's true. I, I don't foresee this leadership, um, you know, set up staying the same for long. 
I think you're going to see some some pretty big shakeups there too. But again, you know, it's it, it's a gentleman's game. It's a game where they don't really disclose fines or or salaries or anything, and it's been that way for a long time. I I just don't understand where it's going to end up. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. We were at the live tournament. Uh, Dugan and I were there the the first day on the media day, and and a and a, a homeowner came out and started yelling at us to turn down the music. And we're yeah. all looking at each other. Uh, Cameron Tringali and I were looking at each other, this caddy, and we're like, or, uh, yeah, I can't remember if it was Tringali. It doesn't matter. We were all looking at each other. Yeah. We're like, what are you talking about? How the fuck are we going to turn the music down? This, mm-hmm. isn't our, this isn't our show. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's a real kind of loose atmosphere. Is that what's going to be on the PGA Tour? You know, are For they going to start sakes, wearing James, shorts wearing shorts. I mean, what, what's next, <laughs> oh, right? Oh, my eyes. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, so my question is, Obviously, we've we've discussed like who's right, who's wrong, the biggest winners, biggest losers, right? But this is th- this thing's happening, right? Like um, to Henny's point, we're not sure how it's going to shake out. There might be some some things that they got to iron out, um, whatever. But like, boys, what do we think is realistically going to happen? Because what they're saying is live isn't going anywhere. So that makes me think that Greg Norman might stick around in a capacity just to lead the live. But what is live if they are now merging? Um, what happens with Jay Monahan? Who do you think speaks out? Who makes a huge fuss? Like, what do you boys think is going to happen? They had a, a big meeting on Wednesday, I think, at the RBC. Mm-hmm. And Jay Monahan showed up in person. And from everyone's account, I mean, 90% of the guys were asking for his head right there. Yeah. Um, screaming at him. And he just sat there apparently and took it. So, yeah, um, they have an entire uh, players association that um, is responsible for a lot of rules and implementation of things. He's gone. Um, you know, live won't last another two years. There's no way. It was a gimmick from the, from the start. It was a sideshow that was started to prove a point that they weren't being paid enough. Um mm-hmm you know, uh, percentage wise. Right. And so now Phil and all those guys are getting the big salaries, uh, or I'm sorry, the big purses, their salaries are going to change. And, you know, I, again, I, I don't think it'll be around for very long, but the scary thing is who owns the PGA tour now? Like what, what the heck is going on with this whole idea of it uh, being something that's an association, you know, managed by people, a uh, tradition theme. I don't know. Idea of what it is. It just, I don't know so it's so up in the air and i mean come mm-hmm. on guys the wound's fresh right it's only been yeah. a, a week and a half or whatever yeah, so i just called um, the entire golf world a hoe james i'm pretty scarred <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, what are your thoughts dude I, I will say like can we just take one premise dugan and let's just say that like rom was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back as the alleged top three finisher that was going to push this into the space that we're in now mm-hmm I think it's safe to say Arizona State ruined golf. I mean, I think it's I mean, just – That's what, if that's what the streets are saying, dude. Of, it seems like the Sun Devils kind of once again kind of punted on America. You know what I mean? And it's like, what side are you on, guys? Ooh, I mean – Can't take them anywhere, dude. Yeah. Hey, you know who his look. head coach was, right? I do not. So his head coach was uh, Mickelson's brother, um, Tim Mickelson. And then um, Tim Mickelson left there and started caddying for Phil. So whatever it's been, like the last five or six years, he's caddied for Phil, uh, replaced Bones Mackay. And um, anyways, yeah, so there's a double whammy, right? There's a, a, a one degree of separation to Phil. And then obviously uh, Rom coming here and, and learning how to speak English at ASU and, and everything else happening after that. But yeah, you're right. Another, I can tell you uh, who. Another nail in the coffin for ASU fans. I can tell you who wouldn't have messed up golf. It was Jim Furyk. Jim Furyk would never let this happen. Right, Henny? <laughs> Not his pure-ass soul and his crazy swing. Wouldn't dare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, had some really good alum, dude. Um, Annika Sornstam, um, Natalie Golbis, um, you know, Jim Furyk, obviously, right? Mr. 58. Uh, just incredible, the, uh, the, the kind of caliber of long-term golfers the desert turns out. Yeah, hey, you know. Desert golf is tough, so we we brood them right out here for sure. Henny, what are your thoughts, though, man? What do you think is happening long term? Long term is hard to say. I mean, I just, I mean, I think, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like this, honestly, like this was wild to me. 
I mean, and I, I think honestly, the best thing I can say is that like James voice as he trailed off there in his last little soliloquy. And I think <laughs> I used that term the last time because I think, I don't know, I guess you just have like a way of speaking with you for yourself, James, but um, I just have the same feeling where it just kind of like, I mean, I, I, I want the history. I, I like things the way that, like, like that's the part that, as cheesy as it was, like, that's the part where I, I was with Rory. I'm like, dude, I just, yeah, like, I just want this game to, like, be this game. And not that you can't change things. You can wear shorts. You can play music. But, mm-hmm. like, I like that it's a meritocracy. I like that you win, and that's how you make your money. I like yeah. that, uh, you know, it, it you know, at the, the PGA, for whatever that's worth, was a nonprofit organization and did a lot of things to, like, contribute to those communities in which they played and so if this all just becomes a a big money grab blah 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 like fine i mean because that's like what sports are and it's not like oh man like i can't believe this oh my eyes i mean i'll be fine but it was shocking it is weird and i really don't know but i don't think it's going to have much to do with live i think it's still going to look a lot like pga and the money just might be different yeah I will say this, golf has never been more relevant in its entire history, right? I think since post-COVID, when people started picking up the sticks, then the whole live thing broke out, full swing came out, the J.R. Smith documentary came out, because that played a big part too, let me tell you. Um, And now this, like, people talking golf, man, like, look at, hey, I would have never thought three years ago I'd be sitting on a podcast talking about golf, but here I am. So, I mean, do you guys think long-term – Golf is in a good place. Oh yeah, look at the uh, look at the average age of the top top twenty five players. I mean, you got oh, heck top fifty players. I mean, there's so many young players coming out of college now that have been ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. International players come here um, and they play domestically at college and get ready to go. Um, they travel a lot for tournaments. They're on TV a lot now, uh, being interviewed. So they're almost you know getting prepared for those next steps. But yeah, those guys come out ready to go. Um, This young man from uh, Canada that won today was uh, another one of those examples of these young guys that are just ready to go. Um, Rory who, right? I'm sure Dugan won't have anything to say against that. He, he did in (laughs) fact uh, provide another disappointing round four today. Um, You know, he was trying to win the the, the tournament three years in a row. Uh, But yeah, golf's in a great place. Um, This again, any news is good news, right? Um, I, I think sometimes uh, these types of things are the, just like you said, the catalyst that's going to start up a, a whole other generation of being interested in it. So only yeah. up from here. Boys, there's there's really nothing like it, right? You don't see rival leagues coming together like ever, you know? I mean, the NBA has no competition. The NFL is never going to merge with like the XFL. No other the, league gets punked like this. No, not. That's dude. what I'm just saying. I'm just like shocked and embarrassed with PJ. I'm like, what happened, dude? <laughs> Money, like dude. you were just squeezing this little thing out, and like there, no one's even watching it. No one's talking about it. No one cares except for like when they come play an event that's basically, for lack of a better term, just like a PGA event. I know not all of these like majors are specifically PGA events, but. I mean, they are like, it's, yeah, that's the only time dude. we're watching any of these guys from live, you know, and, and then suddenly, like, as James said, like through, through nefarious nighttime operations, suddenly they've completely lost control. Like mm-hmm. what happened? I just like, Money. I'm so confused. It's yeah. I mean, I, I get that it's my, but it's, it's, it's still pretty mind blowing that they weren't able to just like maintain leverage. I guess the court system is a lot trickier than I thought. It does set an interesting precedent, though, right? Because, like, I keep saying money, and I know, Henny, that's, like, the most obvious answer ever. And I, you know, I heard it in your voice. It's not wrong, though. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah, get, no. I, get, I get it. Like, it's it's, just, I get it. Yeah. I it is it, annoying yeah. that that's the answer, though. Like, But it sets an interesting yeah. precedent because the <laughs> the Saudis just have unlimited money. Like, if we're keeping it 100, like, they have unlimited funds. What's to say they can't go do this? Set up another basketball league. Go set up another football league. Go set up whatever. I mean, they're kind of doing it in soccer right now where the Saudis are buying everybody. They have Ronaldo. They bought Benzema the other day. They tried to get Messi. Um, Who's to say they can't do this in another American league, right? It sets just a really weird precedent because at the end of the day, as much as we think that these 
established organizations like we did about the PGA are untouchable and that they're going to be there forever. In comes that oil money and you can't compete with it. You just can't. Like, do you guys foresee anybody else kind of getting weird in the market, like kind of battling out the Saudis? Who knows, man? I think the uh, Oakland A's are up for, uh, <laughs> they're always up for some kind of move. Um, it, it's interesting to think about it long term. But like you said, you know, if you're going to be able to dump a whole bunch of money into something that's a loser now and create something, um, again, I know the scenario is completely different, but, you know, look at expansion teams in hockey. Um, you know, the Golden Knights are in the finals again, right? So, when you start putting together these all-star teams or whatever, and like you said, maybe if it's even a similar formula, you know, yeah. look what worked for a great prestigious sport like golf. You know, you do a similar formula with a sport that's able to do something like maybe the NBA, you know, where there could be some players that would be willing to, to leave to, again, you know, get a little bit of a payday. Who knows? <laughs> What's unique know. about golf, though, is it's like such a non-team. Yeah, yeah, like you like said, it is that like it's so much easier to pick apart these individuals one by one, right? Yeah. Like to to find this like diversion, to find this break, to find this schism, uh, like in this like all of this. I haven't used that word in so long. I was like, I don't even know how to say this word anymore. <laughs> um, but like, I, th- I think that's what's interesting about it. Like that's and that's what is always. Uh, like I feel like baseball just can't be broken because of like the strong labor union and the like it's, it's like so it's like tied to Congress basically. Like baseball can't even do anything without like getting our government involved. So True. it's like weird how golf was just maybe unique. Maybe I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong, but I feel like golf was u- uniquely positioned to be manipulated. Yeah. yeah, whatever you want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I, I heard something too on another podcast this week that a lot of the the organizations here in the US, whether it's NBA, whether it's whatever, right? Because James, like you mentioned, the Oakland A's are always up, right? I think these other leagues have positioned themselves uniquely where I think you can't buy like a 100% stake in any team. I think you yeah. have to go in as like a consortium and have like multiple like minority ownership groups that are part of that. So I think the other leagues kind of like what Henny's saying, they protected themselves a little bit better than what the PGA did. And it's strictly because like Henny said, PGA is meritocracy. Like it's kind of every guy out there, they get paid on what they do, right? There's no team aspect. There's no controlling ownership for a team and like golf, you just kind of can. So I don't know. I think it's going to be very interesting. I think the what I've learned in throughout my years being on this earth is that the the legal system is only as good as the last person to manipulate it. So if anybody can manipulate it, those guys have all the money in the world to hire the best legal teams to go out and do it. So I'm going to be I'm definitely going to be interested to see if they can do it. I mean, hey, they're like I said, they're doing the soccer world. What's to say they can't set up a rival basketball league in Saudi Arabia, drop a billion dollars on LeBron's front doorstep, and be like, hey you know, screw the NBA, come out here and play with us. So I don't know. It sets a really weird precedent. I'm going to be very interested to see what happens. But in terms of golf, um, I don't know, man. I I agree with both of you. I don't think the live has a whole lot of legs to stand on in the future, maybe as like a developmental league or maybe as like almost like a pseudo retirement league because there are only 54 holes. There's like 14 events. But I think the guys are going to want to try to jump back to the, the regular PGA, get their trophies, cement their legacy, while still making a bag because now the money's there. So I don't know. I mean, do you guys have any final thoughts on on kind of the merger? I mean, I'm more interested in talking about the video of what happened on 18 today. Same. Um, Let it rip, not, dude. Same. I'm lived. I'm so, like, yeah, same. Take us there, James. Out. <laughs> so Nick Nick, uh, Nick wins this thing, and they end the drought of a Canadian winning the RBC, right? Since and so like all these Canadian right? golfers are around the 18th. So like Mike Weir is uh, uh, the lefty guy that was good, you know, in the 2000s, right? Um, you mm-hmm. got uh, Adam Hadwin. You got uh, Corey Connors. And so Adam Hadwin is running onto the green and he's spraying the Nick Taylor guy with champagne and literally gets tackled, bro. It is awesome. Like the whole 18th green has, you know, 20 or 30 people on it celebrating. And this big old security guard takes him down. He's like, bro, I'm I'm one of his Canadian golfers. Like, I'm a pro <laughs> golfer. What are you talking about? 
Oh, boy. Dude, it's so funny that it's like that nowadays. My wife and I watched uh, Mouse of the Palace tonight, and that was like a big sticking point is that they had no security to keep the, the fans off the court. Yeah. And uh, now you look at it today, and it's like, dude, even a freaking fellow golfer gets – just shit housed because he's <laughs> running onto the green, you know, like that's, that's incredible. But Hey, like that kid nailed a, what was it guys? Like 75 72. foot putt. 72. 72. Yeah. What was, uh, what was DJ's putt like way back in the day that he like, it was just ridiculously long or was this like one of the longest putts? Well, the one I think about is uh Tory pines. Uh, John Rom made one off the back of the green on 18 to win. Um, mm-hmm. That was a pretty good one. Um, it's just, you know, those walk-offs like that are, are phenomenal. I think I know what you're talking about with DJ too. Um, I think he might've actually done a walk-off a little while back from holding it in the middle of the fairway Jesus. on 18. Um, I know Justin Thomas did it in the Mexico open, but yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, especially in those four or five or six hole playoffs, you know, you kind of like, when is this going to end? And then. The fact that he's Canadian and young and, you know, Canadians right. haven't won their own open in a while. I mean, it just, yeah, it's a, a great way to finish. Those, yeah. those people were fired up. Did you guys see that hole? It's uh, par three that they made. They they called it the penalty box. They made the whole hole look like a hockey hole. No, I didn't see that. That's sick, though. Yeah, they're trying to do something similar to what you guys do out in Phoenix. But um, really, really neat uh, atmosphere they created there, you know, and um, – the, the video is hilarious watching this guy get tackled. And he looks so sad. He's like, bro, you don't know who I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we all identified at the Live Tour that golfers really do just look like guys that mow their lawn on the weekend. So, Oh, my God. It's, it's amazing, bro. Especially Bubba. Bubba looks like just some old guy that's sitting out in front on Sundays drinking beer with his neighbors. Yeah, he definitely looks like a guy that's sitting in front of his pit boss smoking a brisket. You know, I I can totally relate. So, percent. Great, great. It was a great scene today, though. I mean, like, I mean, it's. I would only echo everything that James said, man. It's just rare to see a seventy footer go in. The place goes nuts, and then yeah, then <laughs> and this, then poor Hadwin comes out and absolutely gets sticked by a security guy, and you're just like, what? It, I mean, this is great. Bro, that's a, and that's this, a huge this, bottle this of great. champagne, dude. That was yeah. like a magnum. It took two hands to carry that thing. Hell yeah. Oh boy. And then Rory, Rory's kind of owned that RBC tournament in the past, right? And then today yeah, shoots he's going three, for three over. in a row this year, bro. Yeah. Shoots three over and just shits his pants. Can't handle the pressure of the live tour. Mm. Not to bring it up again, Henny. I'm sorry, but no, I don't no, here's the thing. Like Rory is a golfer. Like, look, man, look, this is what it is. Like I like anybody who's like a sap and just sinking your money into Rory bets, like that's on you, man. Like, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying I'm saying like, hey, it might be like actually a stand up guy, despite what we think of him as a. Because I'm with you, like I get the whole thing about him, like you know, why is he the face? Blah blah blah. I think it's because he's like the one who is was willing to be the face. I mean, I think yeah. it's plain and simple. Like he was willing to be the face. Tiger, I think ninety percent of the time is going to take more of the Michael Jordan approach. He's not going to say a whole lot. Someone had to say something. Clearly, John Rahm's a sun devil, can't be trusted. And so, like, I mean, who do you, you know, who's left? Who's really going to talk? JT wears a backwards hat. That guy's way too dangerous. <laughs> um, so it's just like, who kind of, like, does it fall on? Because golf's just, like, this weird space. Ooh, but I'm with you yeah. on the Rory. Like, God, dude, Rory, if, like, I, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to hear someone tell me, like, I think Rory should be favored in this tournament. Yeah, you can no tell me that, food. but I'm, I'm going to, like, my eyes are going to hurt, like, as I roll them <laughs> against the back of my head. Can I ask you, Henny, a question specifically? I know you don't want to keep talking about live, and we don't talk about the actual live. No, it's okay, like, actually. I just, I just wanted to, like, take some brevity. We just needed a break. Yeah. Why do you think Tiger hasn't said anything? I think you just kind of answered that. And when he does speak up, what do you think he's going to say? Because I know you're a huge Tiger guy. <sighs> that's tough, man, because I don't know. It just depends on, like, where he decides. The, th- the thing that's tough with Tiger right now is, again, he's not going to play. So he's going to have yeah. another surgery. And I don't think he's a guy that likes to go out of his way to talk when he doesn't have to. I think that's mm-hmm. just generally the rule of like kind of how he's operated. Yeah. I don't think he's going to go out of his way to create any extra attention for himself. He's barely even just started to even start talking to the other golfers, frankly. Like yeah. in the last – like I think all of this humbling experience has made him probably a bit more human. Mm-hmm. Um even, you know, and then so so I, I don't know. It's interesting, man. Like, I think it'd be really interesting to see what he says, because I think 
we're all waiting for it. You know, do you mean? think there's like some part of him that's still gonna? I, I would imagine that he's still gonna somehow tell whatever the new company line is in some regard because that seems to be where he goes. But at the same time, dude, like the guy's getting up there and he might not be playing a lot of golf and he might want to just say some stuff and maybe he does have an opinion that we're just totally unaware of. But I kind of think that. I don't know, man. I think Tiger does his thing, man. I don't. I don't know that he's getting like he probably cares less about this than maybe. Well, I'm sure he cares more about it than I do. But it, it seems that the, the vibe he gives off is that he might care less than I do. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it for sure. Um, we have a pretty big tournament coming up this weekend, don't we, boys? Or this in a couple weeks, or what is it? No, it's this weekend. Uh, this U.S. Weekend. Opens at uh, yeah. L.A. Country Club. Um, yeah, it should be fun, man. Um, you know, the last big tournament that was there was the 2017 Walker Cup. Um, it's a prestigious amateur tournament, right? Kind of in a Ryder Cup, Ryder Cup format. Um, so a lot of these guys are going to be playing this place for the first time. Uh, a couple of big names, uh, you know, are kind of from the L.A. area. Um, one of the ones that sticks out to me is Max Homa. Um, mm -hmm. He shot a 61 in that tournament uh, that he played there in college. So, um, you know being a Bruin, you know, will definitely give him a little bit of uh, insight into that place. But, you know, it's a U.S. Open. It's going to be tricked out. Uh, Gil Hance is responsible for tricking out a lot of these um, older uh, layouts, if you will. Uh, he's kind of the um, the go-to for the USGA nowadays to make courses really, um, you know, aesthetically back to where they were when they were originally established, but then, you know, making them modern as well and uh, get them nice and long. I mean, it's a weird layout. It's obviously a par 70, right, which is pretty common for U.S. Opens. Um, they've got five par threes. Um, they've got a 650-yard par five. They've got a par three that I think it's 11 that can play 290, um, and then 15 can play as short as 78 yards. So, I mean, there's just going to be some really strange uh, mixes. Um, from what I see, it looks a lot like a Riviera-style golf course. So. Um, right. Uh, you know, it kind of looks a little bit like the Australian sandbelt courses where the the grass kind of runs into the bunkers and a lot of runoffs around the greens. But yeah, man, common USG set, USGA setup. Mike Davis is going to have it uh, playing good. Seems like the weather's been okay, a little bit uh, foggy the last few months. So we'll see what the uh, overall, you know, difficulty is. But yeah, man, there's a lot of people predicting it's going to be low scores. Um, have, have you seen anything, Henny, that, that you can see uh, that says otherwise? No, man, I'm with you, but I'm excited to see this. Uh, I'm excited to see this course. I mean, I, I think Riviera is always a a pretty good test, and and like I think it's fun to watch to the eye. I'm a big fan of West Coast courses. Just I just am. I'm just gonna forever be like that. It goes to the East Coast, and I'm just like I don't know if I like this course. I'm just it's just who I am. I mean, it's it's no fault of anybody. But so I'm excited for a West Coast setup. I'm excited for the U.S. Open to be out here. I like you think like someone like Max, someone who's played that, you know, someone who's been out here on the West coast. I think you got to keep an eye on anybody who's a, a West coast guy, if you will, um, from a golfing perspective. And then if you look at the odds though, it's all exactly who you think it's going to be. It's Rom Scheffler, like the odds makers are going to tell you it's exactly who we, nothing's changed since when we talked last time, James, it's the exact well, same names. I, I mean, you know what, I mean, what names are different? I want to I want to make a uh, an an add uh, an edit to what I just said. Uh, obviously, I'm an idiot and I'm not thinking straight. It's uh, way past my bedtime. Max Homa is a uh, Cal Berkeley alumni, so I apologize. What I was thinking was he did shoot 61, but the alumni from the Bruins that played it a little bit was uh, Patty Cantlay. So um, we could get um, you know two people on the podium this week that have uh, ADP logos on their sleeves. Uh, that would be interesting. Um, but no, all joking aside, man, uh, California course, uh, a lot of par threes, typical U S open. I'm thinking it's going to be someone who drives the ball and, and, you know, can putt pretty darn good with their irons, you know, again, typical test, uh, put it, uh, let's see here. Who's, who's the prediction for then? Why, why don't we just do it? Why don't we stick with the, uh, with the East Bay and, uh, and, and give Max home his first, uh, major championship. I like Love it. the pick. Who do you got, Henny? I really – I'm excited for Homa. I've been excited for Homa and this opportunity for him for a long time. I would also say this Victor Hoffman guy keeps showing up, doesn't he? Yes, I he mean, does. 
He keeps hanging around, and he keeps hanging around, and I'm not even sure he can see what's going on out there because he looks uh, high. He the always looks vague, but he is just <laughs> hanging around, and 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 he's slowly. I'm I'm slowly coming in. I I like this kid, man. I'm like slowly starting to like him too, and he's just, you know, you start to feel for those guys who are just like right there. So. Um, seems like Zalatoris doesn't seem to be playing quite as well, but then he just seems to show up at majors. So just trying to like reach back into like more of the sleepers, but, um, God, it'd be, it'd be cool to see someone, someone interesting up there. But, uh, you know, if I, I, I ought to be a hundred percent honest, like if you look at the numbers, Scheffler's done nothing but finish top 20 in every single thing that he's done for the last nine months to a year. Like he's just always also going to be on that leaderboard. So if you, you know, again, fake gun to my head, Scheffler. There you go. Ho- Hovland was the one that came to the Masters round one with, like, the sick shirt from, like, Schenke Golf, right? Yeah, it was a terrible Correct. shirt. And keep in mind, boys, he won the U.S. Amateur at Pebble Beach uh, just a few years ago. Um, no, Hov- Hovland's so. my pick for the shirt. I hope he brings the same amount of fire to this <laughs> tournament. So. He will be wearing something – different for sure he'll have some <laughs> some some spice to it which is yeah. that's all good like that's what i'm saying i'm all for that like you got to help me out which by the way ladies on the lpga tour i don't know what's going on in my youtube algorithm guys i'll just let you in on a little secret if i fall asleep <laughs> dude if i fall asleep no matter what happens inevitably i'll wake up and it's the lpga tour and so it when it, which is fine and i assume that's like something because of like youtube rights like i assume the pga tour isn't on there and so then they're like well but you like you like golf so like just watch these dude girls you have to help us out dude like i I have no i can't tell you guys apart i like i'm like watching it and i just i don't even know who like i can't figure it out i mean maybe i'm half asleep but the guys have like a way maybe i don't don't know if it's really that or maybe it's just me and i'm just like a a loser but i feel like there's a way to separate themselves that i'm just like not I'm, i'm not getting that from the women's side the girl from stanford just won though right and tiger gave her a big shout out well, yeah, that was sick, by the way. Her first yeah. professional uh, tournament. Yeah. You know, and uh, she crushed it when she was at Stanford. So, yeah, man. Um, Tiger sharing that cardinal love. Uh, I think they said it was like 100 and – I don't remember how long it had been, but it had been a long damn time um, since yeah, maybe the 50s or time. so. Yeah, I think it was like the 50s. Yeah, sometime in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, boys, yeah, before man. we become just full blown golf podcast, because that is what this is trending towards. Some we're NBA not a stuff. golf podcast. Remember, just keep telling the people that we're not a golf podcast. <laughs> this is a sports podcast that just happens to dip into golf for an hour at a time. <laughs> yeah, dude, we we hit that that golf buffet line pretty hard sometimes. But uh, the NBA finals are going on. I don't blame you if you missed it. Um, as promised on this podcast, I did miss. I think it might have been like game three um, because my wife wanted to watch the new season of um, God, what's the freaking show? Um, I'm drawing a blank. 90 Day Fiance. Okay, 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, Yeah, I I know Vanderpump's hot right now. So don't know why I was blanking, but um, as promised, I did watch that instead of one of the games for the NBA Finals because that's just how riveting this finals has been. And James, (laughs) I know you are a little bit of a hoop head. Have you watched any of it? Oh boy! Um, whenever my team gets knocked out, I, I definitely want to watch some more good play. And I, I don't quite understand this this huge guy from the Nuggets. Um, you know, people <laughs> pe- people don't like his style. Um, I don't like LeBron's style. I, I I think he flops a lot, but this guy just seems to put up triple doubles like it's routine. Um, I, I don't understand how a seven footer actually looks okay shooting a three pointer. I mean, and that's just one player, right? But no, man, Denver is in the uh, <laughs> in the, the power position seat. and have been for a few months. Um, yeah. I I hope they keep this team together because they they really got something clicking right now. Uh, Jimmy Butler can do anything that he wants, but you, you got to have other people to support. But no, man, I, same thing. I don't have a lot of interest in it, and I turn it on. It's the second or third quarter, and they're already up by twelve. I'm kind of over it so hey yeah. I, I i i watched lebron come back what three or four in a row against us um you know i think when he was with the Cavs. so anything's possible but um there's no way dude unless jokic like you know breaks his leg or so, shit he'll probably still win with a fucking broken hip but um <laughs> yeah man it's yeah, like, what would it change about his game yeah it's just <laughs> yeah, weird man lot. like he's so slow and it, i don't know he doesn't 
when they show close-ups of him, he doesn't look like an athlete. He looks like a boxer or something. But, man, it's just – <laughs> yeah, he's something to watch, man. That that fallback he does, and just yeah, he he has a pretty solid game. So take it or yeah, leave it. And you know. I know, I know you're watching it pretty closely, bud. What are, what are your thoughts so far? Yeah, I'm still watching it, and I'm just, I mean, I just wanted to thank for the podcast listeners for hanging in there to just finally know we were right. You know, like eventually, <laughs> we told you like this Heat team's a bunch of frauds. Uh, no, like it, it's. <laughs> Look, they're they're not like it's been a good run, but like at the end of the day, like I don't know how this kept happening. I don't know Boston, you idiots. I don't know the rest of these. Yeah, you suck. Like I, I, I don't. The only thing I regret is not just like continuing to beat the drum of the Eastern Conference sucks. We all know the Eastern Conference sucks. The Eastern Conference has always sucked. Outside of the, you know, occasional flair of Giannis or the greatness of LeBron James or Michael Jordan, you you don't build teams. You occasionally collect superstars, and we all knew this was going to happen. So, uh, yeah, the Nuggets look good as a team is like what we really have talked about probably the last couple of times we've convened, and and that still continues to be the case. The Nuggets are just a much better team. The Heat, though, it's been a really fun story, and it has been cool. It just, it's just, there's no way. The Nuggets are just getting 25 points from different guys every night, and it feels like whoever Jokic feels like he wants to give it to. Uh, Jamal Murray stayed in the, in, I don't remember, that might have been the one James missed, but like game three or game four just was shooting, you know, hanging around just so he could get a triple double. Yeah. They're I think toying the one I missed. And playing yeah. with their food, man. This is not, this thing is over, man. Nuggets yeah, in think, five. I think it just comes down to, right? Like, the the heater running out of gas man like they they got to where they're at because a bunch of undrafted guys and guys that were kind of tossed around the league finally found a home and spolsters probably you know we've definitely covered it on here a top three coach in the league but you can only get so far when jimmy butler's your best player and that's not a slight against jimmy in the least he's a baller we've gone over that a million times but if you're asking me who's better, Jokic or Butler, like Jokic is proving like he might be the best player in the league right now. He's having a Giannis type season. And um the Heat just don't have the dogs to run the race, you know. And Struce is out here missing wide open three pointers, and um Jimmy's just doing Jimmy things still, but still running out of gas. Bam is playing well, but it's just the the overall team construction, like these guys were never gonna be able to battle with a team that's as just well built as the Nuggets. When you got like James said, Jokic out here doing everything in the world, just kind of like sleepwalking through a triple double. Jamal Murray finding ways to get a triple double himself. Michael Porter Jr. is playing pretty well. Bruce Brown, all time like great pickup for nothing in the off season. Um, just th- these teams aren't even close, and the Heat should be happy they didn't get swept because. The Nuggets are just that team at the end of the day. Like, I agree with you, Henny. I think the series is over. Um, I think I think the Nuggets know that because they're already making – I've never seen this before, but a team in the NBA Finals is making a trade for the offseason where they traded three second-round yeah. picks to the Thunder for a first-round pick. Already like, we're going to start that rebuild. We got the yeah, we got the disease of more already happening, and we can already feel yeah. role players asking for more money. We need more picks. Yeah, never seen this ever, but that's like the biggest indication that they're like, yeah, fuck the heat. Like, this is easy. We're going to get the chip and and keep building. So, still taking um, phone calls, like in the middle of the series. They're like, hello? Oh, yeah, we'll trade some picks. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not casual. Busy. Don't worry about what us. A dunk so. on the heat. <laughs> so, man, it, it just has not been the greatest NBA finals. And we called it, we, we said it like in the second round that if it was going to be heat, um, nuggets like it was gonna be boring and we were we were right um but what i will say is that the season overall has been fun i i sent i don't know if you had time to look at it when you were golfing henny but i sent you a twitter thread where it was like this has been the most interesting funny season in in memory and going through that thread and just seeing all the different memories of this season and all the shit that's happened and continues to happen especially all the zion stuff like Dude, this was a season to remember hour for on sure. Zion. I don't know if I'm oh, not saying man. we should, but I'm just telling you, I could do an hour on that. No <laughs> what problem. Mess. What a mess. No money to pay him to do nothing. Yeah, him between him and Jaw, South Carolina is not safe because that's where they're both <laughs> from. And like I want to know what's in the water down there because it's just crazy town. 
So. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> Zion acting like Tracy Tracy Morgan's character is just like a bit of a ridiculous routine to pull. Like I'm like, bro, I don't know if that's the move. Yeah, and then Jaws trying to act like Omar from The Wire. Like it's just it's <laughs> insane, dude. Like I I can't keep up with it. And it's so, not once; it's multiple times. He doesn't learn his lesson. What the hell, yeah. dude? So I'm okay Whoa. having a boring NBA Finals because the season overall has been electric. So yeah, um, that's, that's the best part about the NBA, right? Like the, the the stories continue, anyways. Like I've been probably spending more time looking at the guys that are in the off season who are already making ridiculous mistakes or great decisions depending on how you want to look at them you know every tomato tomato but Branding, uh, yeah like i'm i'm enjoying that so yeah thanks nba of, for keeping it moving a lot of grassroots marketing happening in the nba right now for sure on a player level so uh good or bad <laughs> all right that kind of got me i don't know I like why that. funny though <laughs> yeah yeah um but boys it's been fun a lot of golf talk a little bit of nba talk but that's just kind of how the week's gone um, going forward, we will try to have uh, Benny Crown over on to recap the NHL Stanley Cup because um, it's looking like the the Golden Knights might pull it off, but we're not sure. Obviously, anything can happen. I do want to have our boy Matt Hesse on to talk a little bit about the soccer slash football season coming to end. Messi coming over to the States. Lots to talk through. It's not going to be a boring summer. We're not jumping quite yet into the ridiculous exercises that Henny and I like to participate in in the summers. Um, golf, obviously, will have a lot of stuff going on. So, James, you're more than welcome to hop back on when some stuff pops off. Maybe we can have you on after this sweet tournament coming up. Um, boys, you have any parting words for the folks? I just uh, can't say thank you enough for letting me hang out with you guys. It was a blast. Of course. Henny? I was just going to say thanks, James, for, for jumping on, man. We appreciate you. Absolutely. 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 We'll see you out there on the golf course soon, Henny. Yeah, Let's hopefully I can sneak out there too, but chances are, are I know. we got, got to catch Dugan on one of his four majors. He says he gets to play quarterly. That means he gets – every time he goes out there, it's a major for him. Imagine the pressure. <laughs> Boys, there's a reason why I stand a little bit harder for Liv. It's because we play the same amount of events. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to call the courses three weeks ahead. Hey, grow out the rough. My boy's major is coming up, man. I'm going to need you to just, just let it grow it out a little bit, okay? Absolutely. Stop watering the greens. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right, boys. Well, it's been fun. Listeners, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Um, share the podcast with some listeners. I'm I'm speaking to you, James. Shoot it out to the Bay Area for us. Let them know that we're a fun podcast that they can listen to on their drive into work where they're about to be miserable. So um, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to rate. That helps us out a lot. Follow us on all social media. Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, we're on them all. So give us a follow. And with that, we will talk to you later. It's been fun. Bye, everybody. Go East Bay. Have a good night, guys.